flashback. And I'm here to tell you that even though the player counts are still high, even though there are new additions and a good community backing and all this new stuff, Fortnite is dying. <laughs> Fortnite is dying. Incorrect. If it wasn't clear from that introduction, I definitely do not think that Fortnite is dying. I said in that video that I might have to eat my words because I hoped that I was wrong. And I gotta tell you, this is the most wrong I have been in a very, very long time. Season 3 is actually kinda gas. No pun intended, of course. By now, you know the drill. I'll talk about the map, loot pool, battle pass features, and the future of Fortnite, setting up my inevitable review at the end of the season. And as always, let's start it off with the map. I and many others wish that we got more with the map. I mean, look at this sandstorm and look at how much of the island it covered. This is definitely a missed opportunity to parallel Chapter 2 Season 3. Honestly, I think it would have been sick to have most or all of the map covered in sand and then have it go down each week as the underground repaired the damage and fought back against Megalodon. Then you could at least tie the map into the lore. I'm not too mad though, and I definitely don't have any complaints about what they did end up giving us. The wasteland biome is honestly perfect other than its size, and I love all 4 POIs that they added. I'd also like to add that they put little changes all around the map that keep it fresh and in theme with the season, but without doing too much. Also a huge opportunity to name Sandy Steps as Shady Sands, but what do I know? The map is definitely getting a 8 out of 10, I'm happy with what we got and I wanted more. The loot pool was a little different this season. Fortnite focused more on bringing back old weapons with mods rather than giving us new ones. We only got one new original weapon this season, and it's a pretty creative and good item. My only gripe is that the loot pool feels sort of stale, as there were no changes in the assault rifle and submachine category. Personally, I would have liked to see the Warforged vaulted and maybe brought back another gun like the Scar, and I would have loved to see something like the Rapid Fire SMG take the place of the Harbinger SMG. They did give us the return of both the combat shotgun and combat assault rifle, but the AR is currently locked behind a boss. I know creators like Aggro don't take issue with this, and no shade bro, but I do take issue with this. However, it is still really early on in the season, and it's hard to tell whether or not the combat AR will actually be added into the normal loot pool in a later update. See, that's the thing with judging a season less than a week from its launch. There are so many things that haven't come to the game yet that we were promised in the trailer. For example, we have this harpoon gun, this flamethrower, the fallout laser rifle, and the return of the minigun. That's so much that isn't in the loot pool that could be. And hopefully they change things up mid-season and give us some unique mythics and items. The medallions this season were also done really, really well. I think all of them are mostly equal, but my favorite has to be the infinite nitro one. The mythics that the bosses drop are pretty broken. If you manage to get all of them and a good car, then it's basically game over, but I'd like to talk about the cars a little bit later, so I'll stop the loot pool right here and give it a 7 out of 10 as of right now. Now, the battle pass is just insane in my opinion. Every skin is a hit for me, and I found it extremely hard to rank them, but let's do it anyway. Last place is probably Bright Raider. The skin looks very cool and I like it, but it's conflicting because of how much Bright Bomber related content we've gotten recently. I like it, but I would have rather another skin be in the pass instead, like that remixed dummy skin or that ranked biker guy. Seventh in the pass is Ringmaster Scar. Again, by no means is the Ringmaster Scar skin bad, but her base style brings it down a lot for me. I have no problem with the theming of the skin, but I think the colors are pretty off and they just don't flow well together. I much prefer the two extra styles. Next is going to be the Fallout armor. Now, even though I haven't played Fallout, I do respect the franchise and the skin does look pretty darn cool, especially the extra two styles, but the skin is way too bulky to be feasibly usable. And fifth is going to be Peabody. I don't think I need to explain myself here, he's a very valid meme skin. Fourth is going to be Magneto. He's super cool and I like his Fortnite original version, but I just think he's a bit forgettable. We'll see however. I think this speeds to a bigger thing, that Fortnite will remix a Marvel character for the Battle Pass and sell the real version in the shop, but that's just a theory. A GAME THEORY! Fourth place goes to Megalodon. This guy is super cool with some incredibly awesome looking edit styles, but he runs into a similar problem with the Fallout skin. I actually think he's a little less bulky though, and I can't wait to run him when I unlock him. And the top two skins are Rust and Machinist, and they're roughly equal in my mind. Both are very clean skins with some incredible edit styles, but I think I like Machinist a little bit more. Anyways, the Battle Pass is obviously one of my favorites ever, so I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10. The new features this season, and this is the one that I'm gonna talk about, you already know it, the cars are one of the best additions to the game in years. 
And if you don't know, this season cars have been completely revamped. They've increased in HP by at least 5 times, and boost no longer consumes fuel. Instead, it's a separate meter entirely. Now there are service stations around the map that can refuel and repair your car in a few short seconds. Along with all of this, there are new car mods for your bumper, wheels, and turrets you can put on top of the car. The way you get these mods are by driving through boxes, so you never even have to stop your gameplay for one second. All of these changes have been integrated into the game so seamlessly and make for an incredible playthrough. While a lot of people hate this, I actually really love it. And so far this season is definitely one of the most divisive of all time, and as we know it with the Fortnite community, people will only grow more hostile to one another as the season progresses. This is why I'm a little bit nervous about the future of the game in Season 3. I don't think it'll get stale, I mean, I'm still having fun and playing a lot, which is a lot more than last season gave me. But the things that they do plan to add, like Fall Guys being integrated directly into Battle Royale, makes me a little apprehensive. And what I said about the Fall Guys collab and my stance on it still stands, no matter what, so only time will tell if this hurts the game as much as I think it will. However, there are some positives to be had. With the release of the Season 3 trailer, the roadmap is basically 100% real at this point, so all the things that will be coming to the game like Metallica and Pirates are confirmed. This is a very exciting prospect because I love both of these things very, very dearly. Let's hope Epic Games doesn't mess this up. So far, I give this season an 8 out of 10. It has a lot of potential too, and I really hope that it's not wasted as this is one of the best launches of all time. Anyways, that just about wraps it up for today's video. Make sure to subscribe to the Worthless Opinions podcast as we have our second episode live tomorrow night with a special guest, Cosmic Flu. It's going to be a lot of fun and we hope to see you there at 8pm Eastern. A huge shout out to my members who are on screen right now, and if you want to support me, it's only 99 cents a month. And if you can't, subscribing also helps out a ton. Anyways, thank you for watching and as always, have an absolutely fantastic week.